This is a piston. Last century, the fundamental unit of industry was the piston. As we moved from natural to mechanical sources of energy, humans to horses, to steam, to combustion, our, our capacity grew, our reach extended. We, uh, we moved things faster. We connected to more places. Exploration, a, a vector we've chased since the beginning, accelerated. This piston was turning at the center of the world. Billions firing, paving roads, creating cities, transporting us. Engines roaring, worlds building, driving change. Now today, the piston is no longer the fundamental unit of industry. It's the sensor. Sensors like we have in our, in our pockets, sensors that both power motion and measure it. Where, where the piston creates data through motion, the sensor captures and wields that data at infinite scale. The sensor lets us understand the movement of our physical world. Sensors and the, and the data they record mark the dawn of an era. Welcome to the age of live location. This, this is the beginning of a, of a new chapter in our human story, where context, perspective, and, and co-creation harness change. And, and you all here in this room, you are driving this moment. We're here at Locate to recognize the community building this live map, the 1.1 million developers harnessing the power of sensors, pumping life into the platform the 350 million people a month touching the live location platform, creating this feedback loop of anonymous data. Over the next two days, we will explore the edges of the world, the movement that brings us together and the connections that we share. We, uh, we celebrate our, our values, uh, a sense of mission a shared understanding that in these times of incredible change, we must navigate in a way that maximizes opportunity for as many people on Earth as possible. Explore, move, connect. These are the themes of Locate. Oh yeah, and uh, donkey cars. Uh, and Chris Anderson's gonna get to that a little later. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for coming. This is gonna be a wild couple days. Hey, Paul, my name is Greg. I got your contact from Antoine Martin. Hey, I'm, I'm helping out uh, the sheriff's department up here in Sonoma, uh, map the burned out neighborhoods. I have a giant geotiff that I'm up, uh, uploading to Mapbox. I need some help from Mapbox on visualizing this to get it to the city and the counties. Uh, I basically have the whole coffee neighborhood, uh, and I just need uh, help. Uh, making it uh, visible, visible, and then an API and an embed link uh, to share publicly. Thanks. Please welcome Camilla Mahone, Satellite Product Manager at Mapbox. Hi, everyone. The North Bay fires that burned in California last fall were the costliest in U.S. history. In my four years on the image processing team at Mapbox, I've worked on a lot of humanitarian response. We've processed imagery for earthquakes in Haiti and Nepal, hurricanes in the Philippines and the US, anti-malaria initiatives across southern Africa and Southeast Asia. But the Santa Rosa fires felt different. I remember seeing plumes of smoke on the horizon and waking up to there being ashes on my windowsills and covering my car. Schools were closed. Hardware stores were completely sold out of air filter masks. The entire team felt it. And as a community of developers, we knew we had tools to help. 
As massive as the fires were, the response effort was equally large. I'm proud to bring up UAV coordinator Greg Krustinger to talk about his role in responding to the fire. Greg, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you've brought a drone with you. I have. Is this the same type of hardware that was used during the imagery collection? And can you talk to us a little bit about that process? Yeah, so this is an off-the-shelf drone that you can buy at Best Buy. And I was on the scene helping the Alameda County UAV team, uh, the sheriff's office, supporting the Sonoma County teams as we went and mapped some of the hardest hit neighborhoods. So the drones would fly. We collected over dozens of flights, thousands and thousands of photos. And then we would process those photos together into maps using PIX4D, which is a photogrammetry engine. And then we had these giant map files that then needed uploaded to the cloud in order to visualize those data both within the teams and then across the teams and then eventually publicly. Great. And can you talk a little bit about uh, opening this imagery up publicly? It's obviously very heartbreaking imagery. Um, can you talk about the thought process behind that and then also about how you see UAVs in crisis management going forward? Yeah, so ultimately, Sonoma County made the decision to open the imagery up publicly. So those maps were made available to individuals in these neighborhoods that couldn't necessarily return to their homes. They were kind of dispersed after the fires, so they could get very high-resolution data uh, to, to view their homes. And even though that was a tragedy, it was really important for them to you know, see the neighborhood uh, and see their community. Moving forward, the drones and the tools are there today. Uh, we're ready with off-the-shelf platforms to collect very high-resolution data. The problem is the bottleneck in the imagery and the sheer amount of data that comes in. How do we really drill down, process that, and streamline that process so that the imagery can get to the right place, the right teams to make the right decisions? Great. Thank you so much for coming up today, and thank you for your uh, efforts during the response. Thanks, Camilla. Appreciate it. Returning to the stage, Mapbox CEO, Eric Gunderson. I don't know everyone in this uh, room personally. Uh, my hope is by tomorrow night we've, we fix that. But I know why we're all here. We're obsessed with solving problems, complex challenges, by cutting our own path. Greg and the sheriff, what that team did, they don't teach you that in the academy. Look, those are voices of experience. People coming together, understanding ground truth, bringing technology to make things better. This room, the ideas we bring, the places we come here from, the movement that delivered us here today, that's, that's our connection. Connections create stories. Stories light the imagination. And imagination drives us to explore. Exploration is a very powerful force. When we started Mapbox, the places we were exploring, they, they weren't on the map. Everywhere, map and deforestation in Congo, uh, tracking malaria and looking where to put clinics in Nigeria using satellite imagery to look at the floods in Pakistan. I mean, when I first landed in Kabul in 2009 to monitor the election, literally the, the, the map was a simple intersection. You had, you had Ring Road and Jalalabad Road coming up from the south. How are we going to map an election when the map was blank? We needed better tools to do our job. So we built those tools. Then we opened them up to the world. Fast forward to now, we have 1.1 million developers touching our maps, APIs, and SDKs. We're creating a live location platform that breathes and grows and ripples with life. That, that pulse of life is essential. Without it, the, the, map, the map's static and, 
and dead. Real-time location data is at the heart of all of this. Our ability to recognize the dynamics of change allow us to harness it. Performance at scale turns into a mirror of how we move. And for what? For innovation, for recognition, for margins. We do it for the connection. To know one another, to know ourselves, to build and celebrate a, a shared language, the data of our world, the ground truth of our shared experience. This is the frontier of the live location platform. A map of connections, a symphony of movements, exchanges, and learnings. Every human transit, every package delivered, every memory shared, connection made is tied to a location. As we move, this is a map of our lives. Zoom out. This is a map of human activity. And, and now, powered by the live location platform, this is our path to a machine-driven world of ridiculous opportunity. This is the future of location. And we're here building this together. Let me bring up some of the folks that are making this vision possible, the people connecting, exploring, and moving things to make the world a better place. Please welcome Alianthus, VP of Customer Success and Growth at Mapbox. <laughs> As we just saw from the fires across the bay, data gives us the power to respond. Understanding data, working with big data, is incredibly complicated. Tableau is working on making that easier and is here today to tell us a little bit about what they've built with live location. I want to welcome Kent Martin to the stage, who's going to tell you a little bit more. <laughs> Hey everyone. So Tableau's mission is to help people see and understand data. Now Tableau disrupted and revolutionized business intelligence by allowing anyone with data to quickly build an interactive dashboard and visualization for their own analysis and to share with decision makers to explore. Now Tableau customers come from all industries, logistics, oil and gas, retail, to government and nonprofits. And all of our customers require a flexible solution for them to be able to understand how location is driving parts of their business. Now, given how important location is to our customers, we partnered with Mapbox so that our customers could augment how they use maps in Tableau and get more value out of their data. Now, enough talking. Let me show you a quick demo. So here we are. This is Tableau, the blank canvas, and we're starting from scratch. And how, is it, how easy is it to start building a visualization? Well, let me show you. In this case, I'm working with offshore drilling data from around the United Kingdom. I can just go ahead and start double clicking. Here I can see all of the wells by type in and around the UK. And to explore the data, I can use the legend as a quick highlighter tool, and even to filter out the data. If I'm curious about who's operating in the region, well, I can bring up a, a filter and make that a searchable list. Let me search for a company that we're probably all familiar with. And just like that, I can see the wells that, in which Shell is working with in the region. I can bring intent up to columns, and have multiples to compare with. But the thing that stands out for me here is I want to make this map truly engaging. I want to add context to it for people who work with this data set to be able to understand the data and understand the location a little bit more. And to do that, I've made, it, I've made a custom map in Mapbox that includes the relevant data, the right context for framing my data set. Let me show you. 
So here I am in my Mapbox account, and I've made this map that shows relevant boundary data sets, geologic boundaries, and blocks in which oil and gas customers will look at and use this to frame their data set. I can just scroll down, hit Tableau, copy my connection string, and bring that back into Tableau. Now I've already gone ahead and made the connection, so from here, I can simply add the map. And you can see how the visualization comes to life. In fact, I want to just start zooming around and go ask more questions of the data set. In fact, if I had about 20 more minutes, I might arrive at a dashboard like this. Highly interactive, allows me to interact with any of the marks on the screen, and all of the adjacent views are synchronized. I could again go ahead and use my filters, pick out a specific class, and see that class in and around the region. Now, I know what you're all thinking. What about bathymetry? Of course, we're always thinking this. Well, that's not a big deal, because Mapbox has designer maps that includes even more detail and the data sets that are relevant for this type of analysis. I can simply go to a, par a parameter in Tableau, choose the nautical theme view, and I can easily see that all of the, the well and exploration here going on in, nor in the North Sea is in the shallow banks in and around the region. So with Mapbox in Tableau, our customers get to bring in custom map styles, their own data to set the right context for their visualizations, and they have full expressive control to customize and brand visualizations as they see fit. Thank you for having me, and I look forward to doing more with Mapbox in the future. Thank you. We're not only trans transforming the way people explore the world, we're changing the way that people and things move in the world. From watching your groceries get delivered on Instacart to having your lunch brought to your office by DoorDash, our live location platform lets developers model their driver supply and transform efficiency. The idea of last mile delivery isn't new, but the reality is now here. I want to introduce Nellie Pearson, from Jump Bikes, which was just acquired by Uber, on a massive bet on multi multimodal transportation. been on one of those powerful bikes? Raise your hands. Nice. Okay, high five your neighbor. High five it out. Hey everyone, I'm Nellie Pearson. I'm head of communications and community at Jump Bikes, and we are Bike Share Electrified. So it's stationless, it's powerful, you conquer hills, it's seven cents a minute. We're run by local teams and headquartered up in New York City by people who are just kind of obsessed with bikes and care about the future of cities. Since 2010, we were the first to create the smart bike. We took all of the tech from the station and just simply moved it to the bike itself, the customer interface, the GPS, the tracking. And then we were the first to bring the stationless, stockless hybrid to market. And then we were the first to bring the e-bike to market. And now, like Ali said, we are the first to work with Uber here in the US, and it's going to be a really fun bet. Our vision is simple. Everyday trips by everyday people. This isn't micro-mobility. This is mobility. It's not the first or the last mile. It's all of the miles. <laughs> and um, today, I'm excited to show you how we use Mapbox to optimize our assets, our bicycles, how we follow important city rules, how we scale really quickly and get out across the world, and ultimately get more of your butts on our bicycles. It looks like I'm getting prompted to use the slides and it's highlighted, <laughs> yes. Oh, here's my clicker. So 
what I get to show you today is pretty cool. Um, but first, I want to tell you how we were introduced to the, the Mapbox family. Uh, from what I understand, we didn't really know about the importance of an open source community. We didn't really know about all the menu of options. We didn't know the importance of a beautiful map. We just needed something that we could customize and put our bikes on and that we could actually afford at the time back in 2011. Since then, we've learned the power of all of the stacks on stacks. Um, since then, we've been able to integrate not just in a, an incredible customer experience, but our, our back end. We've been able to optimize our operations. So I want to tell you a quick story. Um, we, uh, we had this person join our team last fall. They came in. They asked a bunch of operations questions. They learned how to use Mapbox Turf. And then in about a month, the team of two created our back end tool. This is, this is pretty incredible, because then they taught everybody in the company how to use the tool. Um, they taught people how to customize itself for each city. And that person is actually in the crowd today, Tarani and Alex. Raise a hand. Where are you, Tarani? Where are you? Well, they get a round of applause. Um, she is such a badass. Um, <laughs> The sad part of the story is that she loved working with Mapbox so much that she left Jump Bikes last week, and today was her first day on the job with Mapbox. <laughs> so thanks, Mapbox. Um, yes, we've come to learn we gained access to all of those perks, plus the ability to add layer upon layer of bike data and trip data, user data, city data, historical data, predictive data, topography, demographic, all of it. And we're so excited to use it ourselves, not just to op optimize our ops, but then to share it with people like you in the room, with cities that we work with all around the world. So let me just quickly show you how we use it. This is my hometown of Washington, DC. Let's um, run this clip. So we pull up the app. You'll, you'll notice that all of our bikes are in the district boundaries, an important rule. Here we are. I find a bike a minute away. It's got 81% charge, top right corner, and I can reserve it from my phone. Or I can just walk up to the bike and simply enter in my phone number and my four-digit PIN. Thanks to the Directions API, I know exactly how to get there, how long it will take. And I'm off on my way to conquer some hills in my pencil skirts. Next, I want to show you about our ops, how we use it. So we'll pull up San Francisco. And this, again, is what all of our fleet techs, our rebalancers, our ops team, our GMs use. You're going to see really quickly how many bikes from this immediacy you feel. Is this a calm map? Is everything in red? Do you need to pick up bikes as quickly as possible? So we toggle between the charge of each bike, how long it's been sitting, in what area we need to rebalance to. And then what I think is personally most important is we can pull up these neighborhoods that need bikes most, low-income neighborhoods, or, or folks who have poor access to transportation options, and actually rebalance to those with priority. And then what you all might appreciate is that we have rack data integrated because our bikes lock two racks because we want to keep them out of your way. Our fleet techs know to pull up the closest rack nearby. Oh, I hear some applause. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've tracked down a bike. We've showed you how to use the entire Mapbox stat. Um, we told you who's using it. We're going to keep scrolling through my, yeah, uh-huh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, great. We've toggled bike battery. Uh-huh, we're doing great here. Thank you. Um, I hope you all get to go for a ride. We have some bikes in demo outside. We're proud of our bike design. We've customized every bit and piece. And we're proud, especially here in SF, where the tech community is often seen as part of the problem and not part of the solution that we're offering a really cool mobility option that puts more types of people on bikes, yes. But with our data sets and with our locking, we're able to keep our bikes out of your way safely in the public right of way. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I get a ride off stage. This is my little way. Mapbox customers have been building novel experiences, helping people connect for years, which is why we're really excited to partner with Tinder to announce the launch of Tinder Places, live as of last week in a few cities around the world. Places lets you find new potential matches with people 
based on common spots that, you, that you've been and, and can share together. When Tinder first launched in 2012, swiping changed online dating. And seven days ago in Sydney, they did it again with location. We can't wait to watch how Tinder transforms the online dating world with location this time. As a platform company, we live vicariously through our customers. Take a look around the room, and you will find a 1,000 people from different industries and countries all over the world who are building amazing product that help us explore, move, and connect. I am more excited than ever. Welcome to the stage, Andrew Chen, Head of Product, Maps, and Search at Mapbox, and Emily Chow, Director of Engineering and Maps at Mapbox. As with many of you, I grew up fascinated with maps because they were a way to understand the world around us. As a 10-year-old kid, I remember spinning the globe, putting my fingers over the globe, and feeling the ridges of the Himalayas and the mountaintops being transported to a place halfway around the world. Now, fast forward to today, what we're doing here at Mapbox is enabling you to be able to build similar connected, immersive, and memorable experiences. So how are we going to be able to do that? Well, at our core, we are building at Mapbox a real-world operating system, a real-world OS based on the places and paths that connect us. In your devices, the fundamental building blocks are circuits and chips. And the operating systems there allow you to be able to build amazing software and apps that harness the power of those circuits and chips. In the real world, the fundamental building blocks are places and paths. And so what we're building here at Mapbox in a real-world operating system are, is a platform so you can build amazing software and apps that harness the power of these places and paths that connect our lives. Now, I'd like to introduce Emily, who's going to be telling you about some of the near-term work to let you further harness these places and paths. Cool. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so as you've seen from the examples that we brought on stage today, our charter is to provide you with easy-to-use, extensible building blocks for you to build beautiful maps that, make you, that reflect the world around you. Um, and we do this in a few different ways. Um, we provide a set of core map styles for you to use right outside of the box. We provide you tools and libraries um, for you to customize to your specific needs. And we also curate the data, the underlying data that's in our vector tiles to help you make sense of the world. And so with that in mind, we have brand new navigation maps that are live today for you to use in your apps. We very recently launched a major release in Studio that unlocks flexibility and customization using visual techniques that were previously off limits inside of Studio. So you can check, out, check this out at mapbox.com studio and start building your next map for your next project. Um, and coming soon, we will have a major update to that data that I was talking about, underlying our vector tile data. Um, we'll be exposing more labels, more languages, localization to you. So if you're using our maps straight out of the box, there's a more richer display, more intuitive display of information at each zoom level. And if you are customizing a map specifically for your use case, there's a little bit more flexibility to do that. Um, and so this map um, and this update will provide Japanese and Korean language support. There's the Japanese. There's the Korean. Um, and we'll also be, um, among a whole host of things, we'll also be uh, offering support for administrative boundaries um, that comply with our, Jap uh, I'm sorry, our Chinese and Indian government so that our users can uh, comply with local regulation. So yeah, this update will be happening um, next week. Um, and it will be an early adopter release with more to come. Thanks, Emily. So one of those key components that I was talking about earlier in this real-world operating system were places. Places are the parts of the world that have meaning to us. 
It's where you meet your friends. It's where you spend time with your family. It's where you create experiences and memories. So we're excited to announce today that we're upgrading the sets of places on our maps with the help of our friends at Foursquare. So we're going to be bringing Foursquare's high-quality data set of over 100 million places onto Mapbox's maps and search products. So there's no one better to talk about how beautiful this data is than Foursquare's data science lead, Stephanie Yang. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Hi. Foursquare is an industry-leading location technology company. It has a consumer division, which has created very popular apps like Foursquare City Guide and Swarm. Foursquare also has a thriving enterprise division, which has created a wide variety of products for developers and marketers. As a data scientist at Foursquare, I'm so proud of the quality of work that our data science team does at Foursquare. I come from a very academic background. I worked as a research mathematician at some of the top universities in the world before joining this company. And I can honestly tell you that the level of research that's done at Foursquare is similar to what I saw when I was in academia. So one example of, the data, of what I'm proud of is the data science and machine learning pipeline, which our team created from the ground up in order to form the places database of 100 million venues in this world. So our team implemented something called agglomerative clustering to create something called a hierarchical mixture model. I know that sounds technical. The thing you need to know about agglomerative clustering is it's very difficult to get working, and it's virtually impossible to get working at scale on a data set that's as large as the data sets which Foursquare has. But the team worked very, very hard for several months. They researched linkage functions. They also incorporated another technique called canopy clustering into our pipeline, and they looked very, very deeply at the data. We all work with location data. You know it's very rich, and it's also very structured. And they were, all, they were able to take advantage of the structure in order to get agglomerative clustering to work and create this wonderful product. So to put it another way, I often say with data science and machine learning that the devil's in the details. And our team was so good at understanding the right details in order to create this, to get these amazing results. All of this research wouldn't be possible if it weren't on a foundation of good data, which Foursquare has. Our consumer division has given us 13 billion check-ins. Here's a fun fact. Foursquare has check-ins to every country in the entire world, including North Korea. We have an active community of more than 50 million people who use our consumer apps on our website, and they give us so much data. Every day we have this flow of data. In fact, every second of every day, we're learning more about the places in this world and also how people move between the places in this world. We have Pilgrim technology, which can detect 3 billion monthly visits to places in this world with astounding accuracy. And this has been verified by the many companies who've chosen to partner with Foursquare, like Apple, Samsung, Uber, Tencent, Tinder recently, and actually most recently, Mapbox. Foursquare is very proud to be a Mapbox partner. Thank you very much for inviting us here today. The power to, to make maps is the power to define a narrative. And putting developers first means that power belongs now to all of us. Today, we're all map makers. And through these maps, we tell our human story. Throughout our growth, we've stayed true to our open platform roots. We obsess over accessibility and, and creating tools for developers to have full control. And we're going to stay that way. Mapbox culture is built on performance. Now, back in the early days when we were working in austere environments, we were optimizing performance for low bandwidth. Our vector tile map specification didn't create a whole new market because the tech was hot, but because it allowed our maps to work for more and more people. Latency stops you from getting what you need when you need it. And for years, we've been removing that from the equation. I'm proud to say that Mapbox is also a culture that celebrates art. We have meticulous designers. 
empathetic researchers, uh, oddball creators. When you look at a flow of, of telemetry, it, it, it has, it has a, you know, qualities that, that are just reminding you of art, not because it's beautiful, but because it, it has a profound truth of seeing where you move and who you are. The Mapbox leaders you're getting to meet this morning are driving our culture of performance and art. They are the creators. They are the builders. From maps that you just saw to data visualization, navigation, augmented reality, you're now meeting the people building the core parts of our platform. And then uh, I'm going to come back and show you something special. Please welcome Ryan Bellman, product lead for business intelligence at Mapbox. Hello, Locate. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming today. Uh, I'm Ryan. I lead our work on business intelligence and data visualization at Mapbox. We believe that maps fundamentally change the way we understand and interact with data. Your customers, your products, and your business are alive, just like the map itself. We're focused on enabling you, the builders and creators, to tell stories and drive business decisions with your data. On that note, I'm excited to introduce Nico, the head of data visualization at Uber, to show what this really looks like. Can you guys hear me? Yes. What you're seeing here behind me are 500,000 aircraft flying across the USA all, uh, over the course of a day, all smoothly animated, all styled by current altitude, and all in a web browser. This sort of data richness and data scale are what our team at Uber is building for. Uh, a little bit more about our team. Um, our team are 30 experts in visualization that partner with dozens of other teams at Uber to improve the rider experience, to analyze the marketplace, and to explore self-driving car uh, data. We process billions of GPS points on a daily basis, and this is a really interesting challenge for helping our business teams understand and build with this volume of data. In order to address this challenge, we built this tool, Kepler GL which we launched yesterday open source on GitHub. We were blown away by what developers are already creating. Kepler GL is a data visualization toolbox for data scientists and analysts. We built it on top of Mapbox GL because it's the best map SDK out there. And since it's a platform, we were able to seamlessly integrate our work. And we want everyone to have this power. That's why today I'm excited to announce that we're partnering with Mapbox to bring all the data visualizations you have in Kepler GL directly to the Mapbox ecosystem. Over the next few months, we will bring our Deck GL and Kepler GL layers to the new Mapbox custom layer API. Nico, we are so excited to work with your team. Thank you. Custom layers, I'm particularly excited about. This will enable you, as Mapbox developers and creators, to build incredible visualizations of more complex data, of time series data, and even complex 3D data sets. Think of everything from global climate simulations to understanding the billions of rideshare trips that Nico's team has to dropping in a 3D scene like this 3D concept of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch. All of this will be possible with custom layers. It will be tools for you to build with. We can't wait to see what you build. It will be available later this summer. And Kepler GL, you can start experimenting with, and it's available today. Thank you. Please help me welcome Berzabel Tadasa, Director of Product for Navigation at Mapbox, and Morgan Herlocker, Telemetry Engineer at Mapbox. <laughs> All of the maps you've seen today are not only beautiful, 
They power turn-by-turn -turn navigation directly in your apps. We provide SDKs for iOS, Android, and today, I'm excited to announce we're launching on Qt to bring navigation to embedded platforms for automotive. In addition to mobile, we provide full back-end logistics for asset tracking, route optimization, and driver dispatch with live traffic. Everything you need to build an end-to-end -end navigation experience. And everything we've built is possible because of live data, which is why I want to pass it to Morgan to talk about how we're using sensor data to build navigation. Anytime a person interacts with our platform, our maps and navigation learn and react. Our 350 million users contribute approximately 20 billion live anonymized location updates every day around the world. That translates to roughly 250 million miles of travel, a significant portion of all human movement. To give that a sense of scale, that's about 100 times the distance of every paved road in the United States, and that's refreshed daily. As people move, we calculate the speed across every road in the entire world, allowing us to calculate more and more accurate ETAs over time. Accurate ETAs are essential for powering a diverse range of use cases, everything from allowing you to show up to your flight on time to optimizing massive fleets of vehicles as they travel through a city delivering packages. We currently offer live traffic in over 60 countries across North America, Europe, and Asia. And by the end of this year, we'll be launching in new markets across South America, the Middle East, Africa, Russia, and India. Essentially, we'll be in every market, every continent that has a paved road. No plans for Antarctica quite yet. <laughs> in addition to data being anonymized and flowing through our machine learning and statistical models for ETAs and traffic, we're also computing and detecting new streets, one ways, turn restrictions, backpacking trails, essentially any type of infrastructure that we would need to guide hundreds of millions of users around their day-to-day -day activities. And everything is accessible today via our SDKs for iOS, Android, and Qt to provide your users with the best location experience. Introducing Adam Debrezany, Director of Augmented Reality at Mapbox. Hey everyone. Most people think of this as a 3D map. There's so much information that's actually not presented here. We can do some really incredible stuff with our Unity SDK. We can come in, take these building footprints, add textures, add ambient inclusion, do skyboxes, really fill this in. We can even add reflections. Really make this seem like you're actually standing on the street. Put together, combined, this really transforms the map. If you actually see here, the map underlaid is actually being hidden by all this information that was never surfaced before. Our team is really excited about exploring the future of the map. And if you see here, the map is actually looking less traditionally than what you would think of as a map, and it's just showing data. Unity gives us this opportunity to visualize the LiDAR data that you saw and also visualize our digital elevation model, put our satellite imagery on top, really create this experience where this depth makes it feel like you're actually there. It's incredibly immersive. Third-party companies like Phantasmo, she scanned this venue, created this really beautiful point cloud and they put it directly on our tiles in the Unity SDK. What we're seeing is this map is becoming a vehicle for complex data. The question now becomes, how does this come together to build new experiences? Meta, who built this really awesome AR headset, asked this question, and they imagined what it would be like to interact with the map using six degrees of freedom hand controls. This is the first time you can use two of your hands 
to actually touch and interact with map data. And having this map directly in your world is a really powerful experience. It's really, really fun to play with this demo. I love when people swing by our desk and put on this goofy headset, and they look like total freaks. It's really, really fun. And when, you've, when you're outside, I mean, this AR experience becomes even more interesting. If you're walking along the street, actually being able to hold up your phone, see that coffee shop you're going to, and get the relevant contextual information. What we're seeing is this trend where these AR experiences, they're powered by map data, but the map is actually not that visible to the user. So as this is another example, you hold up your phone, this astronaut's being occluded, the shadows are being cast it's using our map data, but the user is not really aware. What's really fun, third-party developers really gravitate toward this. This is an app called Hot Stepper. It's on the iOS app store. It's free. You can download it. This goofy character uses our map information, walks around the city, uses streets, uses navigation, using our building footprints, and he guides you to where you want to go. And, the <laughs> and when he walks past the barbershop, for example, his hairstyle actually changes. It's really fun. It's free. You should definitely use it around Locate to get around. It's really, really fun. So all these experiences that you saw, they're built using our Unity SDK, which is available today. But we want our AR platform to be wherever developers are. Today, we're announcing a React Native AR SDK. Our Locate app is actually built using this SDK. So you can tap on the AR tab and get a hands-on demo. Highly encourage you to do that. This SDK is also really powerful. We can place things in the real world with very few lines of code. Before Square actually got early access, and use this to hook it up to their API and display POI cards in world scale AR. It's really, really fun. We also got really excited about the potential to be really close to iOS developers. Today, we're releasing a Syncit SDK. You can build these powerful AR experiences directly in Swift. Our launch customer, Slopes, which is also in the App Store, <laughs> definitely go and download it is using this SDK. Since we are very close to the metal on iOS, we can take our complex terrain information and pair it alongside UIKit and work directly in Interface Builder. So our binary is only about 500 kilobytes, which if you're an iOS developer, you know that's incredibly crucial for shipping iOS apps. And of course, we have native support for ARKit, so we can do some really cool tabletop AR experiences. So all these SDKs are available today, mapbox.com slash AR. Really excited to see um, what you all build. Thanks. The era of the, of the piston was an era of brute force, uh, right? I mean, 10 pistons firing gave us 10 times the amount of power. But in the era of live location, we are no longer constrained to linear growth. Live location, it's, it's a network effect. Empowered developers, decentralized sensors, ubiquitous devices, they're all feeding back live data. This latitude, longitude, timestamp, elevation, directionality. This is the stuff that allows us to make roads. This lets us see the traffic out on the street. This lets us feel the pulse of a city. Now, so far, We've talked about maps for humans. And as powerful as they are, we've been building all of this just using one sensor, GPS. On the other hand, maps for machines require a high degree of fidelity, accuracy, precision, and update time. And then this all needs to run down on the vehicle, on the edge delivered to phones, cars, and smart devices to make navigation decisions. The most obvious use case for this are autonomous vehicles. They need a level of high precision semantic maps to see the exact road features and their location. Today, we're starting to augment GPS and getting access to the most powerful sensor we've ever touched, the camera. Let me introduce 
the vision SDK. Bring in the phone, the camera, and the automobile directly to developers. You now have control of the driving experience. The Vision SDK works in conjunction with, uh, with the traffic and navigation that you just saw from Bursabel and, uh, and Morgan. So any developer on iOS or, or Android can, uh, can take this and build a heads-up display for navigation directly into your app. By, by turning the most powerful sensor and making it accessible to developers, we're, we're trying to give you the keys to the car here, literally equipping you with better navigation paired with augmented reality empowered by high-performance computer vision. Now, running neural networks directly on device, it allows us to make real-time segmentation of, of the environment. This is semantic segmentation, discrete feature detection. People tracking cars, seeing the lines on the road. Now, as developers use the Vision SDK, you're not just able to get access to this context directly on device. You're able to get access to the data on the edge. It's all accessible and exposed to you. Developers can hook into events from the Vision SDK, reading the data, these streams of data coming out, and you can configure exactly what parts of the data you want to chain that you want to have trigger an experience on, on the app itself, and what parts of the data you want to send back to the cloud. This is why today I'm so happy that we're partnering with Microsoft Azure, bridging what's happening on the edge to machine learning happening in the cloud. Azure's IoT Edge runtime, it's all open source, and allows developers to actually parse out the exact data right there on the edge and select exactly what parts of that data they want to send back up to the cloud for deep learning. So let me introduce Chris Pendleton, Principal Product Manager for Azure Maps, to show you what the metadata looks like and how you as developers can access the exact data and then, most importantly, efficiently stream that back to the cloud for machine learning. Chris? Thanks, Eric, and thanks, everyone, for being here. What an exciting time to be in Maps again. Um, let me unlock my computer here. There we go. Um, so the, uh, this is an interesting time to be in Maps in my 20-year career. Uh, I, I've never been quite so excited to be a part of the industry. Um, the intersection of location with the Internet of Things now creating what we are referring to as the location of things. And so we have never been closer to an actual live map. And as Eric and team have illustrated with their Vision SDK in collaboration with Microsoft, I am so happy and proud to be on this stage to represent both companies and our partnership moving forward. So let me bring up my slides. There we go. I was talking about that slide. Um, so what does this look like? By 2025, people will connect with devices 4,800 times per day. That's once every 18 seconds. And by 2050, more than 6 billion people will live in actual cities. That is 2.3 billion more than live in cities today. 35 million cars, non-commercial vehicles, by 2022 will be communicating with one another. And so the impetus for artificial intelligence on the edge has never been more imperative. And so the infrastructure therein creates a challenge or an opportunity. And so where do we start? Where do we start addressing this challenge, this opportunity in, cha in, in overcoming the infrastructural constraints? Don't rely entirely on 5G. It won't save all of your lives. But through um, artificial intelligence and through this type of semantic segmentation that runs at the edge, 
um, we can overcome a lot of these hurdles. And so Microsoft is proud to partner with Mapbox. And in conjunction with our dedication to artificial intelligence, we are further pushing the limits of cloud computing and edge computing. The native, uh, the, uh, sorry, the Vision SDK from Mapbox, natively running with Azure IoT Hub, will ease the transport of data from the edge to the Azure cloud and back down out to devices again. Imagine hundreds of millions of devices all interconnected, all talking to one another, all making sense of the massive amounts of data that are available to us today. So why do this? The location of things market has a compound annual growth rate of 40% year over year. By 2022, we're looking at a 21 billion point, or $21.2 billion market. This stretches across mapping and navigation, IoT asset management, and location-based services and advertising, among other things. The cloud market for autonomous driving will go north of $16 billion by 2023. That's just autonomous driving. So what's driving that? A single autonomous driving vehicle, just for test, just for simulation, can collect five terabytes of data in a single day. Extrapolate, extrapolate that out. For hundreds of millions of miles required to train modules for autonomous driving. And we're looking at, in the next few years, 15 petabytes per day of data coming off of vehicles. Uh, petabytes are sort of hard to grasp the concept of, but 15 every day is nuts. This accrues to automotive IT spend by 2025 being north of $169 billion. So why do it? Seems like a pretty good reason. Microsoft is in a unique position to support enterprise customers and developers alike. Whether you want to run those applications in the Azure cloud, run them on-prem with Azure Stack, or run them on the edge with Azure IoT Edge, Microsoft will have a system for you to run your capabilities anywhere you want to take them. And so with that, I asked Eric for an early version of the Vision SDK so I could see it working, so I can actually build an app and demonstrate uh, how it works, how we could integrate with Azure, and really visualize the capabilities. And so, we can switch over to this machine. Make sure I got a good network connection here. So we built an app. Maybe, there it is. Okay, and so, what you're seeing here is output from the Mapbox Vision SDK, working alongside of Azure Maps, which uses the Mapbox open source map control under the covers. On the left, you'll see raw video coming right off the Vision SDK. This is just a video being captured of what um, the Vision SDK recorded. But we also have the route that it's traversing. You see the animation of the car driving down the road and the semantic segmentation kicking off and identifying the objects and the location of those objects. We also get uh, other metadata about those objects. We did a, a small sliver of data. We did three objects. The Vision SDK supports about a dozen right now. And so what we were able to demonstrate here is identifying objects, semantic segmentation in video, and a playback onto a map. So this is just a layered map. But you can imagine that since this happens on the edge in real time, this is quite easily integrated, relatively easily integrated, into a real-time navigation system, into a physics engine on board of a vehicle. 
Because the next evolution of this, not only to identify more objects, is to interpret them and to allow vehicles to react to them. And so I want to thank Eric and team for the partnership between Mapbox and Microsoft. We're very proud to be here, and I'm super excited about this conference. So thank you. Hey, thank you, Chris. Those split-second decisions you're making when you're driving, they're critical. Remember how I said we hate latency? The way you reduce latency is by running on the edge, directly on the chip. By optimizing our Vision SDK to work with the chips and sensors inside the devices, we can achieve a level of real-time segmentation with radically lower latency. This level of detail, hardware optimization, is critical for true live location. That's why today we're, we're also announcing our collaboration with ARM. We've been working with ARM on low-powered optimizations for our code, our SDKs, to get on billions of devices. Not kidding. ARM is actually inside five billion phones right now. ARM is the company that makes performance computing on the edge possible. That's everything from the microprocessors in our phone to NVIDIA's uh, Drive PX. So let me welcome up on stage Steve Roddy, VP of Machine Learning at ARM. Most of you in the room probably know the ARM name. And as uh, Eric mentioned, you're probably very familiar with uh, ARM's position uh, as sort of the de facto CPU of choice uh, in the phones that uh, most of you are carrying today. But you may not be as familiar with just how broadly uh, ARM's CPUs, GPUs, and machine learning processors have been licensed and used in so many other markets uh, around the world. Now, ARM designs processors but we do not make chips. Our partners do that. And ARM's licensee partners have to date shipped over 125 billion units. Yes, that is billion with a B. Last year alone, more than 20 billion ARM-powered chips were shipped into the market. Now think about the scale of that platform and that opportunity. Over 100 billion devices, all software compatible, all in fast-growing markets, both mobile and non-mobile. So for the developers and entrepreneurs in the room thinking about your next great adventure, think about what an ecosystem could bring to your product that starts with a common ARM code-compatible platform, runs an optimal version of the Mapbox Vision SDK, and connects to Microsoft Azure services. Think about what that could mean to you the opportunity we face is truly immense. ARM has a long history of driving silicon innovation, delivering the compute horsepower needed to support a rapidly growing number of sensors. And Eric mentioned tapping into the camera for the first time within Mapbox, the sensor that produces the maximum amount of data. We deliver the compute horsepower with GPUs, CPUs, and now dedicated machine learning processors to give you the platform you need to, to run your applications at low power and run it directly on the edge. And our Project Trillium initiative is pushing that technology forward today with enhances in AI and machine learning capability across the whole breadth of the platform. So that whether it be a vision application or a VR application with a guy running around in a blue Speedo, it runs smoothly, it runs for a long period of time, and doesn't drain the battery on your device. So today, we're unveiling our collaboration with Mapbox to provide optimized versions of the Vision SDK on the various ARM platforms, CPUs, GPUs, and the new class of neural processing units. This will enable your applications to run seamlessly and optimally and migrate from device to device, platform to platform, 
without having to do the tedious work of optimizations yourself. Now, we don't have time today to talk about the technical details. If you're curious about how it works, there's a blog post that went live today on the Mapbox website. I encourage you to go look at it. It gives you more information. It has links to ARM and some of the underlying technologies if you want to explore further. Together, ARM and Mapbox are working to optimize mapping technology that will run on billions of devices and will unleash your creativity as you build the next generation of applications, whether that be for mobile phones, robotics, automotive, drones, and more. It's really an exciting time to be in this industry. The opportunity in front of you to tackle billions of new devices is truly immense, and we're happy to have an opportunity to help work with you as you succeed in your marketplaces. With that, I'd like to thank you and thank Eric for the opportunity to uh, be here today. Hey, thank you, Steve. These partnerships are critical to making the Vision SDK a reality. In fact, you can all go down and see this running live in a car. We'll be unveiling this right after this session. The Vision SDK, as you saw, is in private beta today with uh, some, of our, some of our key partners. But we're opening this up to everybody come September. Now, remember, live location has exponential yield. And today, there are more opportunities to move, explore, and connect than ever before. And we're powering the primitives for developers to build these entirely new experiences. We're building the invisible infrastructure for our future, a layer of data and commands that moves people and machines with reality-grade precision through the physical world. The future of the automotive industry is HD vector maps. Our HD vector maps are they're super lightweight tile data that streams down directly to the car. So you can read the map on the edge. And they're tailored specifically for autonomous vehicles. Which is why today, I'm excited to announce our, that our first customer of HD Vector Maps is Mobileye. Together, we are shipping with Mobileye to a major European automaker next year. Mobileye's vision system, it's in over 15 million cars today. And now their custom data from their sensors loaded into our platform will power the future of automated vehicles. Look, everybody, this, this is just touching the surface. Over the next two days, 50 plus sessions with just baller people, we're going we're gonna to explore all of this together. I couldn't be happier to be in this room with the leaders driving this entire space. Right now, we're going to transition to sessions. I'll see everybody back here right before the party uh, starts tonight. Uh, and then cars right downstairs. Let's have a ball. Thank you.